at shocking a spa, there's basically three ways that we consider shocking the spa. Using a bromine concentrate, which is a granula, a dichloro concentrate, which is also a granula, and monoper sulfate, which is also a granula. Today, for the first segment, we're just going to focus on the dichloro and its advantages and disadvantages. And what we want to do is focus in and understanding that it is a dichloro shock, 99% active ingredient, and basically a 1% which is inert, which is a binder, which helps hold it together. If we look at its makeup and we want to just see what it looks like, we're going to notice a very strong chlorine smell. And how we use it is basically one capful for about 250 to 350 gallons. If you get above 500, 500 in that area, two capfuls aren't going to hurt you. So you see it's a granular mix, very strong smell. So one of the, the drawbacks of this product is what? People will use it in this spa. They'll get a strong chlorine odor because you're, you're generally your head's at the level of the water. The vapors come up and you start to smell chlorine, which can become very unpleasant for the consumer. And the nasal, you know, they'll get some nasal um, irritation. So what we recommend to avoid some of that is to shock the hot tub after you use it. So when, when everyone gets out, you use your one to two caps, you spread it across the spa, you turn your booster pumps on, you let it circulate for a half hour to an hour, so that the next time when you go to remove the cover, typically 24 hours later, your spa has been oxidized and disinfected, and you're not going to notice that smell is strong. If you try using this product and then a half hour or an hour later going into the spa, you're going to find it very difficult on your nose. And what's the primary advantage of using this dichloro shock? Disinfection, safety, sanitization. Chlorine is still, in our opinion at Easy Test, the number one disinfectant for a hot tub.